psychologist said that when you do something that makes somebody else happy, it actually makes you happier than them. They did a study on this. And that's interesting. I'm happier giving away money than I was making money. Coming out as a philanthropist was a gradual process for Sid. It began while he was still CEO at Scientific Atlanta. Working with community leaders like Mayor Andrew Young, he focused on building dialogue over issues of race and support for education and the arts. As a scientist, he, he's trained uh, to think about the future uh, and to plan for the future. And he has an amazing way of getting other people to see the future as he sees it. And he's willing to take the time with young people, with poor people, uh, to help them to feel like they have a share in this future as well. So I prove myself as a, as a uh, successful CEO in, a, in, a, in, a, in an atmosphere of conservative other CEOs. So I got a respect. And so little by little, I started to come out a little bit. And it, it was the end of my career at, in Atlanta when I got to support Andy Young when he ran. I was a big supporter of Jimmy Carter. I sat in his box at, at the 1988 Democratic Convention. I was involved in the Democratic Convention. And by that time, I stopped worrying. Retiring from Scientific Atlanta, Sid returned to Boston with his wife Libby to an apartment in Boston's Back Bay neighborhood. Not content to take it easy, he claims that at first he flunked retirement really, really badly. Supporting movements for social change increasingly drew his interest, and he became actively involved in Democratic Party politics as a way of creating practical results to match his vision. I'm politically active in contributions to congressmen and senators. I was very, very active in the Deval Patrick campaign and, and, the, uh, and the Obama campaign. I met with him a number of times. If you meet with some of these people one-on-one -on -one where they're comfortable and there's no camera on them, you find really some really nice human beings. And uh, to, uh, both Duval and, and uh, Obama, saw, you know, and then the fact that finally, as a nation, a person of color could be a governor or a senator or a president. I mean, that's that's really exciting. Sid's practical vision for social change is deeply rooted and shared by his family. Well, it came from two people. Started with my mother and my wife. Uh, my wife was. Uh, married 63 years. Um, uh, I have one wife, one car, and one home. And three beautiful daughters and four beautiful grandchildren. Uh, my mother was always a very charitable person, always collecting nickels and dimes in those days. That's what the best you could do was collect nickels and dimes and maybe quarters. My wife was, was very good. She, uh, she worked in home counseling with dysfunctional families. Uh, she worked on uh, affordable housing, but always just kind of one-on-one. -on -one. My brother was very liberal, I would say quite left of center. And so he and I were very political and began to uh, become interested in uh, some of the socialist doctrines of from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs, and so forth. My brother Julius Stoppel, a courageous fighter for civil and labor rights, he marched in Selma. So here he is talking to my older brother, who was a little more centrist, mm -hmm. but good Democrat, post-World War II, 
spent his time at Worcester, Mass., and he was honored by the Democratic Party of Worcester and was always a hard worker all his life. In Boston, Sid has continued philanthropic work with community groups and education. But throughout his life, he's found himself in the right place at the right time. Through his philanthropy, he has been involved in international efforts relating to the conflict in Israel and Palestine, and more recently, in efforts to study and apply nonviolent approaches to social change. And I, uh, I was fortunate to meet this lovely professor, Dr. Linda Trope, who explained her work and explained uh, scholarly research that shows that nonviolence has been successful. And we all know how unsuccessful violence has been, notably the Vietnam War, the Iraq War, the Gaza War. It's unsuccessful. Other than, I mean, all we did is kill a lot of people in the end. Making money, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you know what to do with it. Okay. As long as you don't just buy three boats and five cars and six homes. As long as when you climb the ladder, you don't pull the ladder up behind you. <laughs>